Ashley at Bookish Rum. I'm going to apologize in advance because if you can hear music, someone is playing music really, really loud outside. So I apologize if you can hear it, but I can't help it and I need to film this video. So as you can see by the title of this video, this is my birthday library book haul slash unboxing. I have a lot of stuff on the floor around me. I just celebrated my birthday. So I treated myself to getting some library books. I was sent quite a few things. And then I also I think maybe got myself probably a few things from thrift books. So a couple of secondhand things. So what we're going to do is I have a couple of things that I need to do first. As you can see by the title of this video, I have a sip spy box to unbox. I also have this cool stationary stuff that I have to show you guys. So we're just going to go ahead and get started. So the first thing that I want to show you guys is that I was reached out to by the owner of a black owned stationary company called the seasonal pages. And I don't know if you've ever seen any of this stuff on Instagram, but it's really, really, really nice. And I love the fact, first of all, that it is a black owned business. So if you're looking for ways to support black owned businesses, especially small black owned businesses, this is definitely the way to go. And this company offers a variety of different things. As a matter of fact, I will put a screenshot up here of me kind of scrolling through their website. And I was kindly sent a couple of bookmarks and I'm going to show you one of the bookmarks because they're the same but they're printed on two different materials. And this is one of the bookmarks that I was sent. First of all, Black Girl Magic. I mean, let's go. It's absolutely gorgeous. I never say it. I never tell anybody but I collect bookmarks. Okay. I am horrible at using them because I don't like to lose them but I do collect bookmarks especially just bookmarks that I find at the library and stuff so as soon as I was given the opportunity to receive some of these I was like yes please send them my way you are a black owned business like of course of course of course so if you're looking for some really really nice bookmarks and some other stationery, I definitely would recommend checking out the seasonal pages I will leave their Instagram page below as well as their website and you can use a code that I have that is bookish realm 10 so you can get 10% off of your order and these are actually set at a really really good price so if you're looking for ways like I said to support a small black owned business and get some really really nice merchandise out of it I definitely would recommend checking them out and it came in this really really first of all I just like the envelope it's nothing but a clear envelope but it was just so nicely packaged even with the card the card that I was given is really really just nice quality very very professional and just very very beautiful so definitely check out their site it's absolutely amazing I'll make sure that I leave the code down in the description box in my videos from here on out so you can definitely check them out so the first thing that I'm going to unbox before we even get started into the haul itself is my Sip Spy box. So y'all know that I've been had Sip Spy. I was unboxing my Sip Spy boxes when I was vlogging a lot more. I would unbox my Sip Spy boxes and talk about it a little bit. Well, it was funny because Sip Spy actually reached out to me and said that they would like to send me boxes to showcase on this channel and I was like, I already love your company. You're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so I definitely was like yeah I already get your boxes so why not I already talk about your boxes on my channel so they sent me this box which is my September tees which I have loved y'all know that this is hardcore the truth the the reality of the situation is that I adore sips by <laughs> y'all know this because I drink their teas so much it's ridiculous. So this is the September box specifically made for me and I am excited about this one. They gave me another one that's super caffeinated. <laughs> I don't know if y'all remember me talking about the one that was super caffeinated and I was like yes I need super caffeinated tea and the packaging of course is absolutely beautiful. So we're gonna go ahead and look at these. So the first one that I have is I believe this is a honey bush tea by Rubus Rocks. I'm probably saying that wrong but that packaging wait for the camera to focus 
that packaging is really nice and this one is a caffeine free tea and it's honey bush is the sweet sister to the classic rubos tea it's named after its flowers that smell like honey to deliver a smooth gentle and slightly fuller body rubos taste i'm probably saying that wrong but this is from south africa wow okay it smells good it smells strong but it smells really really good all right the next one that i see here is another stash tea which i really do like stash tea it seems like i always get one in the box so i really like this one and this is an earl gray which is a double bergamot earl gray and this is the packaging for stash so this Earl Grey Fanatics grew especially fond of the top grade oil of bergamot that Stash Tea uses in their Earl Grey tea and asked for more. So this is one that was made at the request of drinkers. So now it has double the bergamot in it. I like Earl Grey. I think I'm a classic Earl Grey type of girl. This one is going to be really good. So this is done by Miracle Tree. This is the chai moringa energy infusion so this is the one that is super caffeinated you know i'm gonna be on this and it's a chai tea it's a moringa energy infusion contains 155 milligrams of organic caffeine tea extract making it the perfect coffee replacement which is good without the jitters or the crash i have been telling y'all on my vlog that i have so many issues with coffee now as far as it making me nauseated and making my stomach hurt so i've been looking for high caffeinated teas to substitute because i need the energy sometimes after caring for the little one and then having to still be you know a full functioning adult and adulting so this is a must and the fact that it's a chai tea is clutch and the last one that i have here is a lychee and rose cold brew which i like that pink packaging as well and this is actually one that you use cold water for. So this is a way to actually make drinking water easier. I actually think that I got these. This is, this is a tea temple. So I order stuff online from Walmart sometimes and do pickup. And they gave me like a little gift grab bag. And I think it had a tea temple in it where you put it in cold water and you let it sit for seven to eight minutes. And then it makes drinking water easier which i am trash at drinking the amount of water that i need to be drinking so stuff like this helps where once you put it in your water it makes it easier to drink and that's really really cool so drinking two liters a day is easier with stuff like this and this is lychee lychee and rose lychee is really really good which i've had before and i am very finicky about rose but everything that sip spot has been doing with rose i rather have enjoyed so yes that's really cool i think i'm really gonna like this one all right y'all so that's it for the sip spot box i think that is really really cool i think i'm really really gonna enjoy that i will make sure that i put my information for sip spot down in the description box below as well as the code if you want to order from the company separately and not necessarily just get a box of mixed tea from sip spot you could actually go to the companies and you can use the codes provided by sips by to get a certain percentage off like some of them as high as 15 20 percent off from the company so i will make sure that i link all the information down below in the description box so thank you to sip spy again for sending me that box y'all are amazing i liked y'all even before you sent me the box so <laughs> true testament to how great that company truly is if you're looking for a tea company to try out all right y'all so on to the books so i'm going to do the library stuff first I am going to keep it as brief as possible with some of this stuff because if not we would be sitting here for two hours and I just am not going to do it. I am going to go through the books first and then I have some comic books and manga checked out where I'm just going to show you the cover and the author I'm not gonna really go into heavy description especially with the manga because I have quite a bit of manga checked out so yes and some of this you have already seen because I've used it in videos or I've put it on a TBR or something along those lines but we're gonna go ahead and jump in so the first one that I have here is Sarah and the meaning of awesome by Sarah Gonzalez and Monica Brown this is about a young girl by the name of Sarah who runs a I think a cupcake business and her parents are her grandparents are being forced to move out of the house and she doesn't know 
what to do so she's going to try to fix the situation this is actually written by and inspired by the viral video and social activist um sarah sarah gonzalez so if you've never heard of her definitely check it out this is a children's chapter book it has quite a bit of illustrations in it which I think is really cool but I just saw this one at the library and I was like oh that looks really cool like I just wanted to read it it'll probably take me like 30 minutes to read this book to be quite honest the next one that I have here is step up to the plate Maria Singh and this is by Uma Krishna Swami and this is a middle grade book about a girl by the name of Maria who wants to play on her school's first all-girls softball team but this takes place I believe in the 40s she is from a multicultural background her father is Indian her mother is Mexican and it takes place in the 40s and it kind of speaks to the experience of her parents trying to protect her from racist ideals that are happening in the country at this time but of course they can't hide her from it for forever so she starts to see discriminatory laws and everything and she has to find her voice basically in this unfair world I randomly found this one and I'm not gonna lie I originally just was attracted to it because I thought the cover was cute and then I read the inside flap and I was like yeah this is one that I'm probably really gonna enjoy I had never heard of it before I'd never heard of the author before so this sounds like it's going to be a, a great and interesting story especially since it's probably gonna have some historical fiction aspects to it the next one that I have is a graphic novel and it is the plain Janes by Cecile Costella Lucci and Jim Rugg and this is about four teenagers all by the name of Jane it's not spelled the same way it's Jane in different formats or Jane as the middle name but they all bond together because they are outcasts at school they don't feel like their parents are great individuals and this really focuses on their journey of finding their voices, finding what makes them feel comfortable and using art as their way of expression. And what I really liked about this one was the fact that it is actually done in, I wanna say the word is monochromatic. If I'm wrong, correct me, but it's only done in pink and green. Those are the two, oh, pink, green, and blue. Those are the three colors in which this is, this is written, which I love when graphic novels do have that type of twist to them. The next one that I have is Gods of Jade and Shadow by Silvia Moreno Garcia. It is about a woman by the name of Cassiopeia and she wants to escape her small town of Mexico and she actually opens up this trunk I believe that her grandfather owns and she releases the Mayan God of Death who is seeking out her help to recover his throne from his treacherous brother and if she fails she's screwed but if she succeeds there may be some great things that could possibly work in her favor so I know I've seen people really talk about this one and have really enjoyed it I do have another book currently checked out digitally by Silvia Moreno Garcia so I'm trying to debate right now which one I want to read first but this one just really really just caught my eye and a lot of people have been talking about it on book two so I decided to go ahead and check it out. The next one that I have is Perfect Little Children and this is by Sophie Hanna. This is a thriller about this woman who has had something happen in her past between her and her best friend and 12 years have passed and she's trying her best to avoid coming in contact with the friend but she can't fight the temptation and she goes and she drives past her friend's house and she sees her friend's children and they haven't aged so she panics because she's like 12 years later why are her kids still the same age so this entire time she's trying to figure out what exactly is going on with this woman's kids and to me I don't know if this is going to be just a thriller or if it's going to have some paranormal aspects to it but this is one that I probably will be interested in maybe picking up in October. The next one that I have appears to be a historical romance and this is The Beautiful One by Emily Greenwood. This is funny because when I saw the cover I was like this looks a lot like the portrait from The Lady in the Titanic and how Jack draws her nude and then I read the book the back of the the back of the book and 
it specifically talks about this woman who was drawn in the nude and there's like two guys who know about the picture and they need they're trying to figure out who the woman in the picture is and it turns out that Anna who's the main character is a woman that's in the picture and she flees and she ends up at this Vicomte's house and he ends up having a ward that he takes in and he implores Anna to take care of the ward and she ends up I guess kind of defrosting his cold heart but he doesn't know that this woman that was drawn in the nude is actually her so I wonder if this is supposed to be like have some elements of like the Titanic because that's definitely the same pose that Rose was in in the movie I'm just saying it is the same exact pose Next I have One of Us is Next by Karen McManus. This is a sequel to One of Us is Lying. I have read every book that Karen McManus has published so far except this one. So I'm looking forward to picking this one up. The first one is kind of a mystery slash thriller take on The Breakfast Club. And I'm trying to figure out how this one is going to turn out. I don't even want to say anything about the description because it is the second book. But I am really excited to pick this one up. I've been waiting for this book for a minute. And then I also checked out some picture books for baby. So I got When the Babies Came to Stay by Christine McDonald, pictures by Jeanette Bradley. I got Child of the Universe by Ray Jaya Ward Hanna and Raul Colon. Colon. I probably butchered everybody's single name, but that cover is absolutely gorgeous. And Bad Brows by Jason Carter Eaton. This looks really, really funny because his eyebrows are out of control but this looks cute okay so like I said I now I'm gonna I'm gonna show you the manga and the comics I'm not going to go into descriptions for these because literally we already are almost at 25 minutes and it this and I still have a whole bunch of stuff to unbox so I'm just gonna show you the covers and the titles I have One Punch Man volume one by Yusuke Murata I've heard great things about One Punch Man in the anime. Princess Jellyfish by uh, Kiko Higashimura. Erased by Kai Sambe. Waiting for Spring by Anashin. Our Dreams at Dusk by Shimanami Tasugari. The Promise Neverland by Kai Ushirai. Shira. I've already talked about this one. You guys know I love this one. I gave this one five stars. My Brother's Husband Volume 1 by Gengoru Tagami. Snow White with the Red Hair by Sarada Akudiki. Mob Psycho 100. Bleach by Taiti Kubo. Bride Story by Kaoru Mori. Gwenpool Strikes Back, which I'm trying to figure out why I got this one because I'm not a huge fan of Gwenpool. Harley Quinn and the Gotham Girls and Graveyard Shift Volume 1. Okay y'all, so now we are on to the unboxing part. I don't know who all this stuff is from. Some of it I believe is me. Other parts of it I don't I know it's not me not I don't think I know it's not me but this first one that I already have here is a book that was sent to me a publisher reached out to me wow that's nice actually Turner Butler publishing reached out to me to review one of their books and they sent me a Starbucks card well that was really sweet <laughs> that was really really sweet of them so they sent me, this is so nicely wrapped, me, you, and a married man. And this is super intriguing. I know the title offhand, you're probably like, what? But trust me, I watched the trailer that they created for this book. First of all, the hard work that they put into this trailer was fascinating. And I think that this really does have some thriller-ish aspects to it. So I'm excited to check it out. I do believe that this is going to be a complex story about a woman that's dealing with some issues and her perspectives and views of men and specifically a guy that ends up married and his wife is in the hospital, I believe, dying. And it's super complicated. I'm going to leave the book trailer down below because y'all just have to check it out. You do have to check it out. And I love that cover. So thank you so much to Turner Butler Publishing for sending me this. I'm so excited to read this book, y'all. 
I'm super, super excited to pick this one up. Okay, so I'm just going to grab and go. Okay, so this one is one that I got from Wattpad. They asked me if I would be interested in getting an advanced reader copy of this book. And the book is called Historically Inaccurate by Shay Bravo. This is written by a Mexican born author and it is about a girl by the name of Soul that gets into some trouble after her mother's deportation and she wants to fit in and in order to get into this college history, I think it's a history club, she has to go into someone's house and steal a fork which is the weirdest thing but I think she learns a lot about fitting in and how some things are not worth fitting in because when she goes to steal the fork she gets caught by a guy who lives here by the name of Ethan so I'm wondering how this is going to fit into everything and how the conversation about deportation is going to be laced within this book. I am opening the next box. This one says happy birthday. I haven't read this yet but it looks like it has all the rep. I hope everyone properly spoils you on your day from Darcy. Thank you Darcy. And Darcy got me a copy of Cemetery Boys by Aiden Thomas. I've heard nothing but good things about this book. I believe that Aiden is the first trans Latin X author to make it to the New York Times bestseller list in terms of fiction. I know that this has all the rep like Darcy said and that it deals a little bit with a character that summoned a ghost that they now can't get rid of. So I'm super excited to read this one. I literally have heard nothing but good things about it. Let's see what this one is. Enjoy your gift. This is from Roxanne. So this is the third book in the Girl Meets Duke series, The Wallflower Rager, which a lot of people did enjoy. I do own the first two books, but I was excited to read this one. I heard that if you look are looking for like historicals that are a little bit more on the lighter contemporary side, that Tessa Dare was the author to check out. So thank you, Roxanne. I really appreciate it opening up another box. So this is another one from Roxanne. It says happy birthday. I hope you and baby girl have an amazing birthday month. And she got me a copy of Tokyo Ghoul. Oh, oh. I've been reading to read this manga for such a long time. So oh, I'm so excited. And somebody keeps telling me that I need to read it. Like somebody who watches this channel religiously tells me that I need to read it. And Roxanne also got me <laughs> I know what these are. Oh, this is so nice. So I crochet y'all and I couldn't find my hooks. And I was on a live one night and I was like, or it was during the day and I was like, I can't find my hooks. So Roxanne got me hooks, a whole set. It has measuring tape, hooks, and needle and thread. And this is really, really nice. And it all came in this pretty case. So yes, and it's coming up on winter. So I like to crochet during the winter and listen to audiobooks. So that'll be something that I do in the evening time. This is really nice. Thank you so much, Roxanne. Next one. <laughs> Ashley, I hope you and baby girl have a wonderful birthday month. I sent two favorites of mine that were on your wish list. So this is from Isabel from Happy For Now. I will make sure I link Isabel's channel down below and she sent me a copy of Wraith by Rebecca Witherspoon which I have heard really good things about. I think that this is a nanny romance and I just I've been meaning to read a Rebecca Witherspoon for a very very long time. I heard her speak at some point during the quarantine. I can't I feel like it was a part of Romance Landia with Alyssa Cole hosting it and I think that Rebecca Witherspoon was on there and then like I got a couple of ebooks of Rebecca Witherspoon but haven't read them yet but I'm excited to read this and literally I have heard nothing but good things about this so thank you Isabel thank you <laughs> so this is another one from Roxanne and this is The Unspoken Name by A.K. Lark would. I know that this is a fantasy book that was really really big at some point and I can't remember if they're orcs or ogres. Something about this is interesting. I can't remember specifically what about but I do remember that people really really enjoyed this and I'm definitely excited to pick it up. It has a beautiful 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 cover. 
It is absolutely gorgeous and I cannot not wait to read it. And this last one is also from Roxanne. <laughs> Thank you, Roxanne. So I got a copy of Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nyong, which I've heard great things about because everybody was talking about it at some point. I know that the second book of this one is out but I hadn't read this one. She also got me a copy of Spy Family Volume 1 by Tatsuya Endo which is supposed to be really really good and she got me the second book in the Check Please series Ticks and Scones. Y'all know that I read the first volume earlier this year and really really enjoyed it so I'm excited to see where this one picks up after that ending in the first one which was chef's kiss. I would like to also add that I did receive gifts from Lynn, Erica, Katie, and Sarah which I had already unboxed and was going to be part of a vlog that I didn't end up doing so thank you to you for as well for the gifts that you sent me for my birthday I have already unboxed them and put them on my shelf and I should have just held on to everything but I thought that it was all gonna be a part of a vlog and it just never happened but thank you so much I appreciate y'all thank you thank you thank you thank you now I have some stuff that I recently ordered that I got from thrift books that I had wanted and I talked about some of this stuff in another video. So I ended up getting some Cozy Mysteries. I got Brownies and Broomsticks by Bailey Cates, which is a foodie. Oh, and it's floppy. It's a foodie cozy mystery that I had been wanting to start. And then I also picked up the third book in the Bait Shop Mystery series on Thin Icing by Ellie Alexander. I think I talked about that in the series I Need to Finish video. Up uh, Heather Graham's Heart of Evil, which is the second book in the Crew Hunter series. This is one that I talked about also in my series I Need to Finish. This is the next book that I need to read in the series. And then I got Sugar Cookie Murder, which is the fifth book in the Hannah Swenson series by Joanne Flew, which is not the next one that I need to read, but I have the fourth book that, or maybe this is the sixth book. I think this is the sixth one because I've read four. I have the fifth one that I haven't read and then this is the sixth book. And then I also got Murder with Macaroni and Cheese by A.L. Herbert, which is the follow-up to Murdered with Fried Chicken and Waffles, which I have somewhere up here. So that is it, y'all. I I'm happy that I think I did this maybe in under an hour, which is really, really good. So those are just some books that I kind of gifted to my self from thrift books and of course I have these stacks of books that people sent me for my birthday as well as stuff from publishers so thank you to everyone who has sent me stuff who's asked me to unbox stuff I really appreciate all the gifts and all the birthday wishes y'all it has been amazing and it's just been a really really good birthday so I appreciate it if you want to check out some of this stuff I definitely will try to leave the links to stuff down below don't hold me to it if i don't do it but as always if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you want to see more content from me click the subscribe button if you're looking for ways to support my channel all of the links as well as the links to my social media will be down in the description box below i hope you all have a wonderful day